Hello, my name is Oliver, my pronouns are he, him, and I am the person who runs this channel where I usually go around and interview other people, other queer people, and I let them share whatever they want that in some way relates to their queerness. I have also done some videos about myself, but that really is, is kind of rare. But a while ago I released a video where I described like my trans journey like how I could see evidence of me being trans throughout my life. And I haven't watched that video in a while, but I still think that I can back pretty much everything I said in that video. But I just wanted to give you an updated version of where I am today in my trans identity. So I have known that I'm trans for a couple of years now, but I've always been very hesitant to define it in a more clear way than that. I've been very comfortable with the word transgender because that it's been enough. So in the beginning, I guess I tr kind of tried to find a more specific label and I thought a bit about non-binary and I thought a bit about a trans guy. But what happened in my brain was that I took these labels and I sort of automatically assigned a lot of traits to those labels that I then thought that I had to follow. Even though I know that's not true, that's still what my brain did. But a while ago I stopped doing that completely and I thought, okay, I'm trans, that's enough. Let's just explore this, like sort of from the other way. So what I've been doing is that I haven't defined myself any further, but I've asked people to call me different things and see how that has felt. So about a year ago, I got into a relationship with my partner. In the beginning, I asked him to call me his partner because that was the word that I thought that I was allowed to use. But after a while, I asked him to call me his boyfriend and that felt so good. Hearing that, it felt right. And it's been the same thing with pronouns for me. First, I told people you can use any pronoun, I don't care and I'll get back to why later. <laughs> but after a while I was like, okay, I really want you to use like gender neutral pronouns like uh, they, them or hen or den in Swedish. But that also didn't feel super right. But when people started calling me he or him, I was like, okay, this, this, this feels right. There's no friction there. And it's been the same thing with like words like guy or boy or man. Also like brother, son, all of these words feel so much more home than any other words. And for a while I thought like, okay, these are the words I like. I'm still trans, I don't have to define that any further. And then we have the thing with like appearance. I have done top surgery and... <laughs> Maybe that'll be a whole video because that has changed my life so much and I'm so grateful and happy about that every single day. Oh my gosh, I love my chest, which is something that I never thought I would hear myself saying, but I love my chest. And also with testosterone, um, the changes that I see in my body are things that I want and, and I've thought more about like how do I want people to perceive me and I've realized that what feels most correct is when people perceive me just as a guy. And all of these things have kind of led me to realize that I'm a trans guy. There, I said it. That was hard. It's still hard to like claim that label, but that's my truth. Not that everyone who has the same experiences need to come to the same conclusion. You can call yourself whatever, but this is the right word for me. But why has that word been so difficult to claim and why is it still so difficult to claim? Now we get to the part called internalized transphobia. And what is that? It means that I was brought up in this society that is drenched in transphobia and I have internalized that, which means that I have been marinated in all of these thoughts and ideas and slurs and all of these things things that people believe about trans people and I have turned them against myself. And I think that can be difficult to grasp if you aren't aware of, of internalizing anything against yourself, but I'll try to explain what's happened. When I read things about transgender people, it's usually negative stuff. It's about people pretending to be trans, it's about people regretting that they're trans, it's about 
people being made fun of because they're gender non-conforming. This is what we see in popular TV series where people cross-dress for laughs or when someone make a joke about, oh, maybe he's really a girl or something like that. And what that tells me is that transgender people are laughable and I therefore turn that against myself. I hear that transgender people are pretending to be trans in order to get access to rooms that they shouldn't have access to. And that makes me question myself because I was raised as a girl, which means that I have been victim of harassments and sexual abuse and a lot of misogyny. And since part of the society think that I am transitioning in order to escape this misogyny and these crappy things that women are victims of, that thought is in my brain. And even though I know that I'm in no way transitioning because of that, it's still in my brain. There's also the part where society thinks that trans people are disgusting or ugly or mentally unstable or things like that. And that's also internalized. I've been telling myself that I'm disgusting, that I'm ugly, and that makes me think that I'm not worthy. And that leads us to another aspect and that is me not wanting to be a burden for others because we're also told that it's so difficult like I have to learn new pronouns or how am I supposed to learn your new name I've always known you as your as your birth name or dead name we're told that we're difficult to handle and that's also been internalized for me so for the first maybe two years or three years of me knowing that I was trans, I still didn't ask people to call me another name or another pronouns, even though I hated what people called me because I didn't want to be a burden. But now I know my worth and I know that I'm not a burden for other people just because I ask them to see me because I deserve to be seen and I deserve to be treated with respect and kindness and love. Another reason is that the story that we're told about real trans people is about small children who know from when they're three that they're trans and it's super apparent that they are trans. They play with the right toys, they like the correct colors, they tell their parents when they're really young that I am a boy or I am a girl. And then they're very stereotypical and they fall into this expected pathway of what a normal boy is supposed to be like or a normal girl. And if you fall into that, you are perceived as trans. And while that is super valid, and I know people who've known since they were very, very young that they're trans and have been able to express that and have also been accepted as that from a young age. That was not my case. While I've had some kind of clue somewhere that there was some friction when it came to gender within me, I wasn't able to express that. And the few things that I was able to express wasn't picked up. Again, not blaming anyone for that, but that was my reality. And also, I'm not a very stereotypical guy. I like a lot of things that girls typically like and I'm not a straight guy. I love pink. <laughs> pink is such a beautiful color. And I have liked dressing in dresses throughout my life while I don't do that anymore. But there are so many things that haven't been stereotypically boyish in my life. And because of that, I told myself that I can't be a trans guy maybe non-binary or gender non-conforming or gender fluid, but not a trans guy. That is not true. In the same way as cis men can have very, very different experiences of gender and gender expression, and we accept that cis men are men, even if they're very feminine, we seem to be unable to realize that trans men can have the same width when it comes to gender expression and gender identity. Because a trans man that is very feminine is rarely considered a man. 
And I know this is problematic because I know that being a feminine cis man isn't easy and there is so much toxic masculinity. Let's not get into that right now. Anyway, so that was another thing I internalized. Since I haven't followed this stereotypical path of what it means to be a trans guy, I can't be a trans guy. Well, guess what? I am trying to get rid of all of that, all of that internalized shit, and I'm trying to claim my identity as a trans guy. I recently told my therapist that I see myself as sort of a trans carrot and I'm currently peeling the carrots of layers of internalized transphobia, of other shitty things, of things that religion have told me and I know that inside of that is me and is my true identity and I know that the carrot is trans. <laughs> but the place where I can live in my truth without all of this crap like free from all of that is somewhere within this carrot but i haven't really gotten there yet but i am getting closer and i love that it's so freeing to embrace yourself i think that will be it for this video and please be kind <laughs> this is really vulnerable and scary to share but since all of the people i interview are so brave and they're sharing their stories i thought it would be no more than right to also share mine If you enjoyed watching that video, please like, comment, subscribe and share the video. I really appreciate you showing your love in that way. If you also want to support the channel financially, that's possible via Patreon, but really no pressure. See you next time!